Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out. CCGprime.com, with over 100,000 Force of Will singles, as well as out-of-print boxes from the past, and TCG accessories, as well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer patrons Shu Kong Fu, Vite Ramen, and Maxime Van He. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there, rulers. Welcome to the Bad at Math Brunhild deck profile. This was given to us by Brednon. I did a couple. I don't think I actually really did any real tweaks to this list, um, but it is a very, very fun list. Another using of Harvesting Season to really kind of go in on Brunhild uh, and kind of mill your way to victory off of a Harvesting Season. So Brunhild is what we're using primarily because we want to be able to access Einherjar's Summon, which is very nice. Technically, you could also do this with um, Adam if you wanted, but uh, Brunhild just has a better flip. <laughs> and so sometimes maybe you just want to reanimate to win the game that way. Um, but that is just something you can make use of. Um, Rune-wise, we're playing uh, to uh, inherit our summon to be able to reanimate Pandora to protect the combo. Soul Resonance to be able to buy back either Artillerist or Alasaurus. Power of Immortality to pseudo flicker Alasa or Artillerist, which is nice. A uh, Dispel, um, because there's some tricky additions in this format and it's nice to be able to do that or have some life gain. And then lastly, Harvesting Season to uh, start the bad math portion of the day. Stone base wise, we're playing two Ancient Magic Stones. Four Moonshades and four Heaven's Rift. You are a black-white deck that sometimes plays green cards. So all of these stones will cover us for black-white, and then sometimes we can play green off of Moonshade. So there you go. Going into the main deck, we're playing three Lumia Princess of Rebirth, Wings of Light and Darkness, just for some handy spot removal and cantrip action. Four Dark Alice Rabbit Princess, because this helps us get our things that want to add up our costs to the graveyard if they're stuck in our hand, as well as set up some neat things with like power of immortality which i'll go over in a minute the win con of the deck mr artillerist of faith mr catapult himself we want to make numbers as big as possible with all of the rfg cards and then throw big cards at our opponent four copies of keep the faith because it's ways to reanimate the artillerist four pandora queen of miracles because she's this wonderful uh human that is just about to get a promo uh, that we can reanimate with Nine Harryar, which immediately unseals our number 13s uh, so that they become free. So we have nice little combo protection in the early aggression. For Alasaurus, Invader of God City, it is a 9 drop that we want to be able to buy back. So you say, well, why aren't you playing the 10 drop? Well, we can't buy that back with Soul Resonance, whereas Alasaurus, we can. It's also very nice because we have so many cards removed from the graveyard. <clears throat> with this deck that Alasaurus can sometimes just be a body by himself, can buy you back something that you need, uh, which is very, very nice. Three copies of Lorite, four copies of Praying Valkyrie to help add to our costs, as well as being a cantrip, two Soldier of Minerva to add to our costs, four Brunhild Sides of Faith to add to our costs, and then, like I said, those four anti number 13 anti-magics. So the whole idea is use Harvesting Season to mill as many of the Broodhild, Soldier of Minerva, Praying Valkyrie cards as possible so that your white card's cost gets higher. So that when someone like Artillerist throws an Alasaurus and you have plus seven to his cost because of your cards removed, suddenly Alasaurus is thrown for 3200 damage at your opponent's face. Uh, and you know, Artillerist becomes super big because you have those cost modifications and all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't need it to be Odin Ruler to make that stuff work. None of it's locked behind Zol Resonance. So you can do some pretty cool things. And in terms of the pseudo flicker with power of immortality, what happens is if you use power of immortality on Artillerist, let it resolve, and then flash in Dark Alice, you can sack the Artillerist to Dark Alice, and then once Dark Alice is finished resolving, uh, Artillerist will then get reanimated, so then you can also just throw something else at your opponent. So it's a nice little two-card instant speed flicker, pseudo flicker with Artillerist, uh, to be able to do some fun stuff there. So that is the list. Huge thanks to Brednon for shipping us this list, showing it off at the side event in the Minnesota GP. It's a ton of fun to watch it play, and it's also just a fun, a ton of fun to play in general. Just, I'm not good at math. I'm gonna throw cards at you. <laughs> um, it's very, very fun. So check it out for yourself. Let us know what you think about it in the comment section down below or what other crazy ideas you've had for Harvesting Season decks. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.